Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Republicans see this as an opportunity to do things that have to be done now to save lives. I have never been more disgusted since Kavanaugh. And we're not going to let you turn the country upside down to shape it in your image. We will work with you in a very generous fashion to help people who've lost their jobs. Shame on you. Yeah, it, I, I'm going to say this. Both sides need to get their heads out their ass and get doing business, right? 1,400 pages, 2,100 pages, 1,800. I've had enough. America's had enough. And normally you look over in the Republicans and go, you guys are doing some funny stuff. I look at the Democrats now, and yeah, you know, Mitch, you're right. Are you kidding me? This is the moment to debate new regulations that have nothing whatsoever to do with this crisis? That's what they're up to over there. American people need to know it. Democrats won't let us fund hospitals or save small businesses unless they get to dust off the Green New Deal. And there, there's a lot in that. Some of the stuff I'm looking at in the House plan, they want green rules for airlines, right? You're like, what? Right? They want all these extra things. Enough. This should be a clean bill. Hey, we're going to give this amount of money to the American people. We're going to give this amount of money to small business, right? Do several clean bills. It's not that hard. We don't have to put everything in this Bill, enough, absolutely enough. Even last night, Chris Hayes, the Caterpillar, right, talking to Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders pushing his agenda. Look, in 2008, the financial industry and the real estate industry, they really did just crash themselves and then ask for a bailout. In this case, it's not like the companies that are suffering brought this on themselves. It's just a virus. We shouldn't be thinking about it as a bailout. We shouldn't be thinking about moral hazard. What's your feeling about that? You cannot simply give $50 billion to the airline industry. And of course, this crisis is not their making. But you can't just give them that money to do anything they want. Like keep their lights on? Keep the Look. I wasn't in favor of bailing out the banks. I wasn't in favor of bailing out the car industry, right? A lot of these the, these companies bring it upon themselves. They did things. I wasn't in favor of, of bailing out people who bought homes that they should never have bought. I wasn't in favor of any of those things, right? But this isn't their fault. It isn't. If you're telling an industry you can't operate... But you can in six weeks or six months or whenever. That's not their fault. They haven't done anything wrong. Well, they did corporate buybacks. Well, you know what? So they did corporate buybacks. Did it destroy their company? No, a virus destroyed their company. Right? A virus destroyed their company their company and their this is the stuff we don't need america doesn't care about your grab ass little games and your stupid agendas nobody wants it you know people want you to do the things you're supposed to do we don't want your green new deal we don't want your your yeah yeah oh it's a corporate bailout it's a bailout because we're telling corporations you guys can't operate you can't The American people want to know, hey, you guys are with us. You're in this. You're going to get this stuff done. That's what they're looking for. That's all they're asking. You're going to get this stuff done. I don't care about your Green New Deal. I don't care about your your, your corporate bailouts. You know what? You take care of the American people, then you go back and you fight elsewhere over certain things. But if you're going to tell an organization you guys can't operate for X amount of days, months, then you better figure it out how you're going to help them unless your whole thing is we just want to destroy them. It doesn't need to be 1,400 pages. It should be pretty small and quick. And if you have to do several small, itty-bitty clean bills to take care of it, first the people, then get to the rest. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Love hearing from you. Good news, the Olympics will go on. Better news, it's next year. That's simple, right? We kind of knew that, right? But Abe, here's the thing that's going on with the Olympics is there's a lot of stuff that has to happen between now 
and next year. Everybody thinks that it's just going to be an easy willy-nilly, we'll just move it. It's not the way it's going to happen. It isn't. And I know it would be great. It would be great if, 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 if we could all meet at the Olympics and the world would be normal and this would be the ushering in of, of us getting back on our feet again. It just isn't going to happen. Dick Pound, what he told Christine Brennan of USA Today, today is what's going to happen. The Olympics are going to be postponed, but the IOC yesterday announced that they're going to wait several weeks to make uh, an official decision and to make an official announcement. Yeah, and they've got to do that for several reasons, because you're having to deal with a thousand different things that are going on. You've got every organization, every country coming in. You've had... Remember, you you get the Olympics, right? But that's six, eight years down the road when they announce, hey, so-and-so, you're getting the Olympics in 2026 or 2024. And so you start planning. There's a lot that's going to go into this. There is. And, and that includes people that have already qualified for this year. What happens next year? Are we going to make them requalify? There's going to be lawsuits, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of balancing, and nobody trusts the IOC. So I think everybody, in some way, shape, or form, is waiting for them to ask for more money. <laughs> waiting. Waiting. Not happening yet, but the possibilities there that they may come in. You remember how many times we've talked about like some of the stuff that they make people in cities do? Do you remember the Rio games? Where they made him clean out the, 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 the slums there, like literally the, the military's going in and moving people, making them build unnecessary stadiums, giving the IOC officials their own lanes in certain cities. So if you're an IOC official, you everybody else is stuck in traffic, which we don't have a problem with right now because of the coronavirus. And then they have their own lane. They may be the only car. And if you're an IOC official, you're I mean, it's just insane. So who knows what's going to happen? Smart thing that Abe has come out and said that we're going to move this a year, uh, and then you have to work out the details. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Love hearing from you. I was thinking yesterday, and this sounds uh, – here's something that the coronavirus is giving us, and I know it sounds weird and harsh, and, and we're going to talk more and more about business and the economy and stuff a little bit later, but opportunity is everywhere. At this moment in time. And I'm not talking about people who are hoarding or doing this, that, and the other. I'm just talking about you're going to have businesses that die. It's, it's, it's sad, and that is the reality of something like this. You're going to have businesses that are going to die. You're going to have businesses that, with some help from the government and, you know, hopefully they were frugal, that they're going to survive a little bit. You're going to have businesses that are going to do okay, right? Maybe awkward, right? Maybe some situations where they're, they're going to survive through this and they're not going to be hurt as bad as maybe they thought, especially certain restaurants that are. But then you're going to have businesses and in a world that we're going to adapt and it's going to become something interesting. We were talking yesterday about how many parents I've talked to over the last two weeks that have been saying to themselves, my kid's education now is being done online. And I'm not talking about, you know, junior high, middle school or even my son who's doing everything online online and at home and by the way thriving jack is thriving but i'm talking about colleges and parents are going to start asking questions about do they really need to spend 60 grand a year to go and have an experience do they really need to do this when they're getting essentially the same kind of education and i know part of why you go there is you're you're getting out into the world but there's going to be a lot of new ways that this is is i think going to change so many elements, right? And that's what happens, right? Businesses and certain aspects that are going to come out of this on the other side, whether it be four weeks, six weeks, or eight weeks, uh, and then eventually, you know, four months, six months, or a year, because that's how long I think it's going to take for, for people to get on their feet. And by that, I don't just mean financially. I mean psychologically. There's a lot that goes into that. Psychologically, people are going to have trouble. You know, just you, you, you think tomorrow if we say, oh, everything's okay, that everybody's going to go back out there and say, oh, the world's fine. It's not. It's not going to be that way. It's a different world, right? It is. Psychologically, people have been damaged by this. Even people that may be fiscally healthy, there's some things that have changed. But there are going to be businesses and, and entire portions of the economy that are going to adapt in a new way. And that is a good thing. 
I really think it is a good thing. I've talked to a couple businesses in our complex who says, you know, after this, we've talked to several people. We're getting the same amount of work, and in many cases, as far as uh, and productivity out of our workers who can work from home, that we're thinking about after this that we may adopt a three and two. You work from the home two days a week. You come into the office three days a week or vice versa. And I think that is going to happen. You're going to find businesses that are going to find a way to rework things, and that's about adapting. And stronger businesses will come out the other side. And we're talking about businesses that can still operate because there's certain portions of businesses that are just not allowed to operate that that's you, you can't fix that, right? That's a government thing. But a lot of other businesses that are adapting, I think it's a good thing. And again, I think we'll come through it financially in a better situation than I think some people think. But I do think that it is psychologically, it is going to take us a year or so to get back to where we were. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Hope you are doing well. I slept so good last night. Let me tell you what I did. So I went home, uh, and I worked out hard yesterday. I did about two and a half hours of workouts, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And I was just roaring and ready uh, and then I, you know, I did my nine hours of radio. That's what I do during the day, about s- about eight to nine hours of radio. Got home and had a little dinner, hung out with everybody, played with the new puppy, most importantly, saw my lizards outside of all of that. And then I went into bed and about 10 minutes after I got into bed, uh, hit my head, hit the pillow, my pillow, boom, out like a light. Woke up this morning. Hit the ground running. Felt amazing. Right now, I know there's a lot of things going on out there. But let me tell you something. My pillow, little things go a long way. In, in stress and anxiety, sleep is one of the things that you can control that will help you. Why not have the best pillow around? My pillow. Right now, they're doing something amazing. You buy one, you get one free. Right? All you have to do is go to MyPillow.com. Right there. Enter code Benson. You're going to get one pillow for free. It's amazing. Made with patent interlocking fill available at custom fitted levels. It fit and just to your needs. You had a six day money back guarantee and a 10 year warranty. Try it for yourself. Little things go a long way in this stressful time. MyPillow.com. Use the promo code Benson. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. The time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Stay at home. Don't go anywhere. Stay home. Stay home. That's Boris Johnson. So the Brits are all staying home. People ask me uh, a lot, like, why isn't Trump declaring a state of emergency and telling the entire country, like, uh, just allowing states to, to work and do their own thing? And as I try to explain to people, here's the thing. Think of America as a corporation, right? And the federal government, the Fed, the United States is a shell. Inside of there, there are 40 other individual corporations or countries. And I do believe that while this thing is going to get bad in certain areas, it's not going to be bad in other areas. And they talked about that yesterday, right? You know, and they'll talk about it more and more going forward today, tomorrow, and 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 for weeks. That you know, Arizona, we've got two hundred and say seventy, give or take, cases that are confirmed. We've had three deaths. We're not New York, right? New York builds up, not out. We build out. Los Angeles, much better position than San Francisco, but they've got this situation where they're looking potentially at eight or 12 weeks that they, you know, where L.A. is doing much better than San Francisco. But the reality is, is Gavin Newsom's basically told everybody this is what it's going to look like for the next eight or 12 weeks. And it sucks. But he's trying. President Trump is trying to allow everybody. That runs their fiefdoms. You know what's best. You come to us when you need something, but you know what's best for your 
state. So just lock everybody up, if you will, for two weeks or a month and say only this. We don't need to do that in some places because it isn't going to be as bad. We've got to be smart. Absolutely. If it grows and you realize that you need to do something and change something, you do that. But to say that that and this is the thing that every governor has been grappling with for the last umpteen days and weeks, which is. What is my point where I know that I have to say, all right, shelter in place. Right. We can ask businesses hey, only essential businesses can stay open. And that first list of essential businesses may be bigger than the eventual one you come up with if this thing continues to grow. But if you're in Omaha, right, you're in Nebraska, and you're looking around going, yeah, we've got some cases, but it's not devastating us. Our hospitals aren't flooded. Okay. right. If you're in New York, it's a different story. Right? Much different. You're in San Francisco. But California itself, but San Francisco, it's a different story. Seattle, but then it's all of Washington. It's a different story. And I think what you're going to find in the coming days and weeks is in some places, as the weather starts to change, as it gets a little bit warmer, uh, that certain parts of the country are going to merge from this thing at a much faster clip than other parts of the country. But I like the fact that Trump's allowing the states to do that themselves. Now, if it grows to where 500,000, a million in in the space of a week or two, obviously you then take action. But at this point in time, let the fiefdoms be the fiefdoms that they are and let the governors make the call for their states. Because at the end of the day, they know their state better than the feds do. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Again, it's easy if you're in Britain or you're in Italy And you say, we have one of everything. We have one government essentially running everything. Here, it is totally different. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I think that they think that they have the Republicans over a barrel. Reality calls and Congress is hanging up. More charitable Americans are thinking to themselves, well, there's some good members of Congress, but we can't figure out what they're good for. Less charitable Americans are saying, you know, how did these morons make it through the birth canal? (laughs) I love John Kennedy. I can listen to him all day. Talking about the stimulus bill. So you got the House package. You got the Senate trying to get their stuff through. This is the way this thing goes. It's going to battle back and forth. People are looking for checks. Somebody just says, Chad, you don't need a check. You're still working. I never said I needed a check. The American people need a check. I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. I have a small business as well, and we're doing everything we can. Uh, my uncle and I have a company and keeping you know our people going best we possibly can. But at this point in time, It is what it is. We're doing the best we possibly can. It's everybody, right? But we don't need people to throw in things, both sides, into this bill, right? They call it a slush fund for corporations. I look at it and I said, you know, maybe some of that is slush. Let's take some of that stuff out. Let's do its own separate bill. Uh, But at the same time, you can't be putting restrictions on some of these corporations that you're telling, hey, We're going to bail you out, even though we've told you you can't operate. So because we've told you you can't operate and that you need to shut down, you you need to do that. You need to help some people out. But we can deal with them in a little bit. Let's first and foremost deal with who? The American people. Small businesses, 500 and under. The mom and pop shop, 
the lady and, and guy who, who, who've got a small business, a, a plumbing company, that they've had to lay some people off, they can't advertise anymore, right? Even though it's a necessity, right? But people are putting certain things off. The hairstylist and the people who own salons, people like that, they need help today. Let's deal with them today. And then tomorrow, once we get a clean bill through, a clean bill shouldn't be 1,400 pages packed with all kinds of restrictions and crap. That's the reality of it. People are losing their jobs. They're losing their savings. They're losing the 401k. We think we know how to get the economy back on its feet over the next 60 to 90 days until we can get control of the virus. Some of my colleagues, they're acting like a-holes. I'm sorry. I'm not saying they mean to, but nonetheless, they're killing it. Yeah, they are. And I think we need to look at this and say, all right, what do we do? How do we get this going? Right? Well, we want a slush fund. It's not a slush fund. Again, I don't care what you get. Do corporations separate. First and foremost, it's simple. A clean bill. We're going to do this for the American people. If, you know, uh, every man and woman over the age of 18 gets X amount of dollars. Right? And now think about this, too. And as I was trying to explain to people, they're like, well, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to get unemployment as well. So if you're getting unemployment... And you're getting this. This is to help tide you over till we get back. And getting back is going to take a while. And I'll tell you why. Because of the psychological aspect of this. And I would like to hear from you guys out there. You can text the program, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. How many of you freaked out about this? And I'm not just talking about from the financial standpoint or the standpoint of the germs and and the virus and what may or may not be my other show that I do uh, with my 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 cohort, uh, who's just he's a great guy, great radio guy, and he he and I have been friends for a while. And we were talking about this yesterday. He says, "How do you deal with it?" And I said, "Well, I just deal with it, man. I just I go out and I live my life. I, I my life, by the way, hasn't changed all that much, right? I I'm kind of a do my own thing, and because I work so much." Time for my family and my lizards and whatnot, and and, and not a lot has has really changed that much. Minus the fact that I'm not playing, you know, in my soccer league. Outside of that, you know, and I would normally go to at least a movie every other week, and I'm not doing that. But it hadn't changed that much. But he's like everywhere I look is poison because he's already a bit of a germaphobe. And he says that everywhere I look is poison. I look over here, it's poison. If I go to use a handle, it's poison. Everything is poison. And that's a tough thing. We're not taking into account the psychological aspect. So even if tomorrow we get a handle on this thing in a way that we didn't think we're going to handle on and we push forward and we start to emerge from this thing in two weeks or a month and you see the market start to take off again, businesses start to open and reload again, there is a psychological aspect of this. And the first one is what we're going through is kind of in a place that we've never been before at this moment in time. We are all in a completely unprecedented territory where our normal reaction to a crisis like this, which is to get together with friends, which is to meet up with the people we care about, we can't use that strategy in this crisis. It's just really problematic for the virus. So I think we're in in a particularly challenging time, not just in terms of this health crisis, this physical health crisis, but also a potential mental health crisis as well. Yeah, and I explained to people that's that's a big thing. Because while people, we, we, we've never been more connected yet further apart because we're always busy, right? So we're always doing something. Now, in a time of need, when we have slowed down and we're watching this thing unfold, we do need human contact in a way that we've, we haven't needed it in, the ye- in years because we've had some human contact. We kind of take it for granted, but we, we've been living very busy lives in a very much a digital world. And now we're looking around saying, well, we need certain things because human beings, we're pack animals, right? We're not supposed to be alone. And it's it's a very interesting thing because things that, that you know, like I read an article the other day, the phone calls back in, right? The phone call is back in. Texting is way more popular when you're busy. But when you're sitting around and you're kind of lonely because when you're busy, you're doing other things. And that includes talking with other people. But the phone call now is in in a way that it hasn't been for a long time. Plus, 
Yeah, I think what we need to do is we need to harness those instincts that we have to be compassionate, to help others, but we need to do it in a slightly different way. And, and it's, it's a challenge, right? This takes work. I remember when some of my students were leaving campus, you know, they all wanted to run up and, and get a hug. They're scared. And it was like, Ugh, can't do that, you know, social distancing. But the good news is that we have these other technologies that allow us to do that. Um, one of the ways we can harness those technologies is really to reach out more than we would. Yeah. And that right there is Lori Santos. She's a psych professor at Yale. And she's right. We've got to use these things in ways we've never done it. And that includes, you know, helping with an older generation that maybe isn't great with technology, setting things up, making sure they get it, because they're into a physical contact, face-to-face thing. And at this point in time, that is not a good thing to do, especially for a lot of different things. Uh, First, Obviously, they're sick, uh, and you don't want to get them sick. And secondly, it's not just even about them. It's about the people, especially people who are in nursing homes and stuff like that. It's about the entire collection of people inside of those areas. Just the act of doing what I'm doing now, you called it sheltering in place. I'm basically trying to socially distance and just not go out of my home unless I need to do so. That act in and of itself is a way to help people. But I'm helping my elderly mother who has COPD and is really um, like particularly vulnerable to this bias. By me not going out, I can take action to flatten the curve. Which is what we need to be doing. Again, Lori Santos, Yale psych professor. And these are just little things. But we got to remember, we're kind of here's the one thing that's other. It, we're, we're in this together. And that's something we all need to realize. We're in this together and that our freedoms come with responsibilities. And those responsibilities aren't just to our families, but to our neighbors, to 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 coworkers and things of that nature that we need to to remember that, hey, you know what? Me not going here may not just benefit me and my family. It may benefit my coworkers and other people I may come in contact with. But all of that being said, there is a psychological thing that we are going to go through as we exit this thing, which we will, that is going to look much different. Because people are going to be going out into the world in a way where they're a little shell-shocked, they're a little gun-shy. Do I spend money? Don't I spend money? Is it or is it going to come back? What could or could not happen? What should I do? What shouldn't I do? These are things that are going to take place in the coming weeks and months that people are going to have to deal with. Can I spend money again? Can I not spend money again? Can I go to certain places? Can I not go to certain places? Should I go to the movie anymore? Should I not go to the movie? It isn't until we've, A, seen a breakthrough in treatment, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, and then eventually have, I think, a a point where we see some sort of vaccine come in that people are going to get back to their normal behavior pre this. So post this, it's going to take a while to get back to that. And I think that is something the economy is is going to struggle with too. We could say tomorrow, we're getting back to normal. Everything's fine. Great. We figured it out. It's this and we move. There are still going to be people that are shell-shocked and not spend money. So while the foundation of the economy may you know, while it's 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 not crumbling, but it's definitely not on the, the the footing it once was. There's still the psychological aspect, and I don't think people quite get that. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program. You know, it's interesting. Here's somebody. I, I well, you, does anybody know who this guy is? When we've stood as one, this nation has never ever been defeated. We've been together, and we're not going to be defeated now. The pandemic of 1918, the Great Depression, two world wars, we overcame them all. And out of each crisis, we emerged stronger. And we will again. That right there is Joe Biden. You forget, we're still in the middle of primaries. Nobody's grabbed the full force of their primary and the Democratic side. Bernie, we know, isn't going to win. Joe will. But what does that even look like in the coming weeks and months, especially with so many primaries being postponed? And how do we vote in November? What does that look like if we're still in the midst of all this, which we won't be? But still, there is politics still going on. 
And it's hard to raise money. It's hard to do any of these things when, you know, he's hunkered down. They're not holding rallies anymore. Trump's not holding rallies anymore. It's virus 24-7, 365 at this point in time. So, yeah, but he's still there. Still there waiting for something. And I don't even know what that looks like come, you know. I mean, they've got theirs in July. The Republicans have theirs in August. Are they going to hold theirs in July? Are they going to have a very subdued one where they only invite X amount of people? Uh, are they going to move it from a place, you know, that because let's just say here's something else. What if I'm out here in Phoenix? They're going to hold it back east where in, uh, uh, in in Milwaukee. What if Wisconsin's struggling with this, but Phoenix is relatively unscathed? Are they going to come here? Move it all around, cancel it all together. It's going to be very interesting to see where the politics of this plays itself out because we will be voting in November. That will happen. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. I'm working with a great organization that is, at this point in time, let me tell you something. You know, I work with Wounded Paul. People always ask me, so they help out veterans. This is not just veterans. I said they help out our first responders too. And our first responders, if you've seen them, around the country especially in certain areas where the, this crunch of the virus is hitting you see how hard they're getting crushed you realize that this is why wounded paul was created yes our veterans are struggling struggling with ptsd struggling with physical injuries that they will never recover from but our first responders are struggling as well and that's why wounded paul is there They've combined their love of dogs, their dedication to finding a way to help their veterans, first responders, and their family, and they created Wounded Paw. And it is an incredible thing. Their motto is to save a paw is to save a life, and it is so true. So they take and transform these shelter dogs to service dogs, and they get them to our first responders and their families to help them through times like this. They're going through things, and it's just amazing to watch the work that they do. Donating is easy, and they need your help. Proceeds are used to protect, advocate, transform shelter dogs and service dogs for veterans, first responders, and their family. You can donate a extra car, truck, RV, even a boat. It is truly a vehicle for change. You get a great tax deductible gift. They also take cash as well. Find out how you can help, and they're always looking for organizations and and animal shelters across the country to to partner with. Go to woundedpawproject.org, woundedpawproject.org, or call eight four four six seven eight four paw. 844-678-4729 or woundedpawproject.org. Chad Benson Show. No need to fear. We promise we won't give you a noogie and make you cry Russia, Russia, Russia. Who is the fearless leader? Who is? Pui, pui, and double pui. Boy, it's your language. This is a family show, remember? Who is the family too? Nostrovia. This is Chad Benson. South Korea used different types of tracking measures to figure out where people were moving, whether they were violating social distancing measures. So, for instance, if they are you know, supposed to be staying at home and instead they're out on the street or using public transportation, they were able to figure that out fairly quickly. That's Dr. Bruce Lee. Just want to let you guys know that. He saw you, Bruce Lee, and he raised you on by going, Dr. Bruce Lee. It's his real name. South Korea. We're not that, by the way. We, we, we're we not at that point where we're going to be socially distancing and tracking those people, whether or not they're doing it right or wrong. We're not there. The beauty of our Constitution is the fact that it guarantees our freedoms and our rights, and we're not there. I, and, and I will say, desperate times, we got desperate measures, but there's just certain things that that's a negative ghost writer. It's just not going to happen. It isn't. It isn't. And I think you're going to see more and more people who are being told they need to stay home and they need to shut, uh, you know, shut in and, and do that. Some people are going to be pushing the envelope more and more saying, hold on a second. You've started to what now? You've started to impede on my freedoms 
So I wonder what that looks like. It's not now. I think most people are, are going to do the right thing. Most people are. More from Dr. Bruce Lee. They made sure they had enough ventilators, they had enough uh, personal protective equipment, uh, made sure masks were being produced and mass produced. So all those things, that's the full set of epidemic strategies they implemented very quickly. Yeah, and that's South Korea there. And they've done a lot of that. They, they, they were ahead of this much more than we were. But I think we're learning stuff from this. And we'll come out the other side in a much better way. But what they're starting to see, like Hong Kong is and everything else, is there's going to be incidents of spikes as you allow people to get back to, you know, the the normal way of life and allow them to start to have more freedoms in their movements and stuff. And because in many cases, are you really figuring out how to stop it? Or are you just hitting the pause button and it's just sitting there waiting for you to restart it? Oh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And gone anywhere. They're talking now. It can live up to 17 days on certain services. So what's that pause button look like? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Love hearing from every single one of you. It's Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts independent life this is chad benson the hardship will end it will end soon normal life will return and our economy will rebound very very strongly but right now in the midst of this great national trial americans must remain united in purpose and focused on victory to every single american please know that the sacrifice you're making at this time is saving lives Yeah, Trump yesterday. Why was he sounding like that? Because he wants it to end sooner rather than later. There's a battle going on between Fauci and the scientists and the doctors and Trump, who's like, hey, we need to get out there. We also have a large team working on what the next steps will be once the medical community gives a region the okay, meaning the okay to get going, to get back. Let's go to work. Our country wasn't built to be shut down. This is not a country that was built for this. It was not built to be shut down. Trump's right about that. And he said region. Why is that important yesterday? Because through all the stuff that you'll hear today, tomorrow, going forward, all of the press conferences and the briefings that we're not really getting a ton out of anymore, you know, uh, because there's so many of them and not a lot is changing. Because I think he is looking at this in a much different way than some other people look at this. Because of who we are and how we're built. We are 50 separate individual nation states. They run their own world. They're their own fiefdoms. They have their own president, if you will. And then we have the federal side of it, who runs all of us. So you got Gavin Newsom, Cuomo, Doug Ducey. You look around everywhere. You've got, you know, I mean, no matter where you are, you've got your governor who, for all intents and purposes, is your president, right? You got Whitmer in Michigan. You got, you know, you look, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I think the way Trump is looking at is how do we get certain regions that may not be adversely affected like New York or San Francisco and California out and about working again. We can't tell them that you guys have to halt everything if it's really not affecting you the way that it's affecting other states. And not only that, but how do we take those doctors and nurses that can be a helper and the supplies that some of these states have that aren't being used and get them to the places that may need them? 
But a lot of people are asking that. A lot of people are asking that. And it's, and it's so funny. It's like, well, we are, we're, we're, we're trading lives for money. We're not doing that. We're not. What we're doing, and, and again, you're going to lose people that will not be part of the statistics because of what's taking place. We are. If we had a full economic collapse that went as far as the depression, at the end of the day, the toll economically, while horrific, the lives because of the economics collapse that will be lost that have nothing to do with the virus would be even greater. But I do not believe the virus is is going to kill millions of Americans. I just don't think it's going to do that, Right. I always love the worst. If you ever noticed, like, there could be 12 different scenarios. And the only one you ever hear about is the worst case and best case scenario. It's, you never hear about, okay, here's the reality of it. What did I say? If we get to under 100,000 by Friday, what most doctors are saying is we've kind of got somewhat of a handle at this point in time. And there's going to be ebbs and flows. And I want people to understand there will be ebbs and flows in this thing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Love hearing from you. And the ebbs and flows look like this. If you go back and look at the pandemic that that affected the world the most, it was the Spanish flu, right? So there were three waves of the Spanish flu. One, two, three. The first wave, strong, powerful, not as deadly as the second wave. The second wave was ferocious. That was the killer. Then there was a third wave that really didn't do that much damage. But that second wave was the killer. We're going to have second waves, not just here, but globally. They will have certain second waves because as we're not doing enough, I think, in certain areas to prepare for that second wave. We're telling people, okay, you stay in, you shelter in place for two weeks. Well, hold on a second. We're finding out now this thing may last longer than two weeks in certain places. You're like, oh, that's not good. No, no. It's not good. Yeah. How about that? 17 days? New data from the CDC and Japanese authorities showing that 17 days after cabins were vacated on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan, still coronavirus survived. And that among those on board, 46% who tested positive were not showing symptoms when they were tested. 18% never developed symptoms but had it and could spread it. Yeah. And that's one of the things, too, when we're talking about who's, who should be tested. Well, in theory, you should be testing everybody because the ones who are going to do the most damage are the ones who are going to feel it the least. Who will have very little, if any, symptoms. Who could pass it off as it's allergies or I just got a little bit of the cold or I didn't get a lot of sleep last night or whatever. And they're going to be the spreaders. And that's the thing that people need to be looking out for. But 17 days. So what you're going to see and what you're seeing in Hong Kong and elsewhere is people are being allowed to have some movement. They're coming back out. And what ends up happening? The infection rate goes back up. The infection rate goes right back up. And now what? I mean, there's a lot that we have to be looking at. We have to be looking at the way that the Senate's handling things when it comes to the financial side of stuff. But also, at what point in time do we say to ourselves, if if we we can't continue like this forever, right? Like, a colleague of mine said, no, we need to do this for long. I said, if it takes a year, if it takes a year. I said, we can't do that. There'll be nothing. The, The cure will be worse than the disease. At the end of it, what will be left will not be any place that you want to raise your family or be in. It's how do we get from point A to point B? That's why each state having its own president, if you will, governor, running it is going to be best. Because I do still believe that while it will affect some states really, really, really bad in regions, there are going to be other regions, even in California. You go look in California, right? You have San Francisco, massive issues. Los Angeles, not so much. Why? San Francisco, build up, not out. Everybody's in a small, confined space. Everybody's around each other. It's a perfect place for that. Los Angeles, while a huge city, a city of urban sprawl. Out here in Phoenix, we built out, not up. 
Oh, yeah. New York. Oh, my God. Everybody's around each other. Mass, mass transit. You look in, in, in Europe, right? You go look at places like Italy. If you've ever been to Italy, it's a lot of people crammed in certain areas. Everybody's close together. There's a lot of things that go into this thing. There are certain places where it is going to be a big grand. I've always said that, you know, a place like India, if this thing really hit India, my God. That would be massive. That would be, it could be devastating in in a way that is just unimaginable. But there will be regions in America where weather's going to get warmer, right? The flu season tempers down a little bit anyways. Uh, You you don't have, you you build out, not up, and those people aren't going to be as affected as other people. There's going to be certain areas that that's just the reality of this. You know, right now we've got, what, 43,000 cases. 45. 45,000 cases? People are going to ask questions in two weeks. At what point, what's your breaking point? That's what I ask a lot of people. What's your breaking point? Is it a week? Is it two weeks? Is it a month? What can you go to survive? Because at some point in time, people are going to lose it. And this past weekend was the first weekend where you really saw the shelter in place and people dealing with it. But you're starting to see people in places like Spain and Italy that are struggling with the isolation. Really, really bad. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to... Tweet at me. You can text the program. A lot of people are scared about this, too, because they look at the numbers. And I'm a facts guy and the data guy over the feelings. And it's hard because this emotional side of things with the chaos and the craziness and the mortality rate. But Dr. Bricks talked about this yesterday. So still 99 percent of all the mortality coming out of Europe in general is over 50 and pre-existing conditions. The pre-existing condition piece still holds in Italy with the majority of the mortality having three or more pre-existing conditions. And that's what we talked about last week. Hello, head of the game. Uh, That most of the people that are dying, older, smokers, two or three already pre-existing conditions that are dangerous. High blood pressure, Cancer, diabetes, COPD, things of that nature. I spoke yesterday to a coronavirus person who's currently isolated. And he said, you know, it's kind of like like one day it feels a little fluey. The next day it feels a little cold, but he's not worried. He's just taking like Tylenol and Theraflu and or whatever. And they're not really and he's not really too concerned. And some people, they get it worse. But those are the very rare occasions. And if you think about, they say that they're probably tenfold in the cases. If that's true, and we have 400,000 cases and only 500 deaths, we're nearing that flu-like data. People start asking questions. Wait a minute. We destroyed the economy for the flu that we should pay. We should all be more cognizant of the flu during flu season. But people will start asking questions about that they will 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter feel free to tweet at me you can text the program as well love hearing from you stamps.com tell you something about stamps.com right now they're speaking about being ahead of the game first of all do you really want to go to the post office anyways like just just a normal like situation do you really want to go to the post office no secondly it's most important In a time like this, do you really want to go to the post office? No. Avoid crowds. Get Stamps.com. They're here to help. Anything you can do at the post office, you can do at Stamps.com. Print postage, on demand, skip those lines. You get it. Stamps.com. Do it all right there from your computer. It brings everything from the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Safely in the confines of your own home, work, whatever you're doing. So you can hunker down and continue to do business. All you have to do is use your computer. Right, So any official U.S. posters, 24-7, any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail's ready, leave it on your door for the mail carrier, right? Schedule a free package pickup 
or drop off right into a mailbox. No human contact is required. Boom. And did I mention with stamps.com, you're going to be saving five cents off every first class stamp up to 40% off shipping rates. Boom. That is incredible. And now, in addition to offering discounted U.S. postal rates, Stamps.com also offers UPS service with discounted rates up to 62%. Stamps.com, you're not going to get a better deal than this. It's a no-brainer right now in this time. Save time, save money, and may, importantly, save your health. Stamps.com. Right now, my listeners get a special four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long term commitments just go to stamps.com click on the microphone at the top type in chad that's stamps.com microphone at the top type in chad and of course stay safe my friends chad benson show Take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? I'll give you a hint. That's coronavirus. You're right. Hantavirus apparently has killed a man in China. (laughs) The Hantavirus, remember that? I think it has to do with something with rat poop. Mouse poop. So everybody take a deep breath. I'm not, we're not, is this, that's the psyche I talk about, right? That we're now every time we hear something new, it was like, oh my God, oh my God. Settle down. Settle down. Some of the other stuff, shelter in place. People want to know what the rules are. It's different for each state. The Olympics, because they're being postponed for a year, right? Big time. Google Meet and Zoom are trending because they've got plugins and certain things as people are becoming more and more comfortable at home and working at home. People are trying to figure out some of the stuff. They want shortcuts and how they do that. So uh, those are trending big time on the Google. Go over to Twitter. You got something different, a little bit more political. Like I always say, reopen America is trending. Right? GOP death panels. The great American takeout. Right? Not dying for Wall Street. 2020 census. My buddy got a 2020 census yesterday. It was weird, too. So he goes on, and he's like, okay, so there's no, like, it gives you a thousand things you can check for certain stuff, right? So he's like, dude, I can put down on Aztec. <laughs> it's like, I know, right? It's like Mayan, Aztec. is very interesting. Very, very interesting. But, uh, and of course, lots of lockdown and when we're going to open up. The Kennedy Center. Why is the Kennedy Center there? Because apparently in the bill that is out there that Pelosi is floating, that yes, even in this bill, the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts is supposed to have $35 million in funding. That is not what this bill should be. That is not what this... I just say it. I'm putting it out there. The bill could be a lot of things. It should be clean. This is what it does for each American. There'll be two phases of the bill if we continue longer and we go from there. But there shouldn't be anything other than help for America and American business. That's it. They'll spin it, but both sides are being clowns. Both sides. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Happy Tuesday. I'm in a good mood. You know, I look at the numbers and I'm saying to myself, now we're going to get through this. I think we're going to come through this in a such a stronger, better way. And it's frustrating as hell, and I get that, but we're going to get through it. We are. We're going to have fun doing it, right? Because I can't be, I just, no sadness here. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I am actually optimistic that we will have an agreement, um, but this is a big deal. We want to have guardrails on this money to make sure that there's some accountability um, and it's not just going off into nowhere. Uh, So there's a lot of work that's being done on the details. That's Amy Klobuchar talking about the fact that they've got no deal done. Uh, The House has their bill. They think they're going to get it done sometime today. Senate has their bill. Everybody's like, this is slush fun. And everybody's like, you're putting money in. Just, you know what? It's a simple thing. We don't have to bite the entire, we don't take the entire hamburger in our mouth. Now, we can say we'll do it bite, bite, bite. First thing that's most important, let's get the people fed. Let's get them the things that they need, the individuals, the workers for these companies and corporations who are now finding themselves furloughed or out of work. Let's get them the dollars in the hands that they need. And that's still going to take a while. Then we'll come back to the corporations and then we can deal with everything else. Right. And by that, we I was telling somebody, well, we can't just. Yeah, we can. We can get everybody fed today. Right. And then we can get the corporations and everybody else taken care of tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. It doesn't all have to be this second, this bill. It doesn't need to be 1,400 pages, 1,200 pages, 2,600 pages. It doesn't. Well, we need to have accountability. Let's have accountability, and we'll talk about that in a little bit with that over there. This is not the time to roll out some parts of the Green New Deal. This is not the time to talk about student debt when we've hit a pause on paying their debt at this moment. This is not the time to fund little games and lobbyists, pet peeves, I mean, pet you know projects. That have. This is not the fu- time for any of that. This is the time to sew it out. And they're not. Well, we want to have guardrails. Guardrails, Chad. What? Well, we just don't think that we can give them this money without having some sort of accountability. Right? Even Chris Hayes, right? Like, who drives me batty, talks about, hey, hold on a second, 2008 and now totally separate. Look, in 2008, the financial industry and the real estate industry, they really did just crash themselves and then ask for a bailout. In this case, it's not like the companies that are suffering brought this on themselves. It's just a virus. Now, Bernie Sanders here is going to say something. We shouldn't be thinking about it as a bailout. We shouldn't be thinking about moral hazard. What's your feeling about that? You cannot simply give $50 billion to the airline industry. And of course, this crisis is not their making. But you can't just give them that money to do anything they want. So keeping their lights on and paying their employees? I mean, what, 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 what are they? You've told them they can't operate. So you've come into their world and says, you can't operate. You must shut down at this point in time. We're restricting things. You can't do this. Now you want to put restrictions on them. You want to bail them out. But you want to do it with restrictions. You want to be able to go, all right, we're going to, we're going to demand certain things. Well, you've told them they can't operate. These are things we should deal with at a later date and later date being again, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let's just get a clean bill through for America. But they can't because they're too busy fighting with each other, and it's ridiculous, and it's a pain in the ass. Welcome to the world of people who can't get along ever, ever, ever. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program. Hydroxychloroquine, Planaquil, chloroquine. I mean, there's these drugs out there that seem to be showing. It's a malaria drug along with essentially a Z-Pack. Uh, are showing that they're working. Uh, of course, our doctors are stepping back and saying, hold on a second, we need data. French doctors, as well as Macron and several others, are saying, all right, we're, we're seeing the data, and the data is this guy was sick and this guy was sick. They're not now. They're way better than they were two days ago, and it would be a disservice, and morally it would be wrong if we didn't roll this thing out to people out there. Listen to Dr. Drew last night. He said, look, the data I'm getting from my doctor friends and the data he's seeing because he is treating patients with this 
uh, and he asked for it. He said, oh, again, I, last week, he said, I'm going to ask, you know, I've already put in a request to get some of this stuff for some of the people. He's seeing, saying, all right, this, this is great because if we can get a treatment, what we'll do is instead of having that huge spike in our hospitals crushed, we'll get people that won't even have to go to the hospital. Why should we be testing it in a test tube for a year and a half when we have thousands of people that are very sick? They're very, very sick. And we can use it on those people and maybe make them better. And in some cases, maybe save their lives. President Trump says he's optimistic about some potential treatments for the novel coronavirus. In particular, a malaria drug called chloroquine. You know, this has been something that's been around for many years. It's been phenomenal, strong, powerful drug for malaria. But we think it might work on this based on evidence, based on very strong evidence. Yeah. And again, in France, they're trying to roll it out in a much quicker way. People are looking around saying, all right. And if it, I, I, I think we could classify this as a bit of a desperate time. We need to stop worrying about the vaccine. Let the vaccine come in the time that it's going to come, which may be eight months, which may be nine months, which may be, it may be 18 months. That doesn't fix today. What can we do to treat it today? Now, you got to be smart about treating it. Couple here in Arizona, not so much. Game changer. That is how President Trump describes the anti-malarial drug. I like, by the way, how they're going to try to blame this on Trump. Chloroquine is now one of 69 drugs being investigated as potential treatment against coronavirus. The problem, it has not yet been approved. And in Arizona, one man has died after an apparent attempt to self-medicate with that drug. And that's a lie, because that's not what he did. Him and his wife, he died, she's in critical condition. Chloroquine phosphate, which is essentially something that people use to clean their aquarium. They took it. And they died. Like you might as well have drank chlor you know, chlorine or or bleach. It's not the same thing. It's not, right? It's something different. But I like how they tied it in, like Trump touted this, and then they went out and did it. And you can't use the what they're saying. It's funny, because we're hearing that it's not a prophylactic. People are like, oh, my gosh, it's not a condom. No, it's not used for protection, meaning you don't take it so you won't get it. It's a treatment that if you do have it, this treatment may work along with this. What they're showing in the studies is if you just take it by itself, the chloroquine, the hydrochloroquine, that you get better over six days or so, five, six days. If you take it with essentially a Z-Pack, that usually within two days or so, three days, you, you, you get better. But you don't take it before to not get it. Daniel Day Kim, the actor, talked about this because he did take it. And yes, this is the drug that the president mentioned the other day. It is also the drug that Dr. Anthony Fauci cautioned us about. He said that evidence that the drug was promising is anecdotal. And that is correct. It means it wasn't studied and it's only based on personal accounts. We'll add my name to those personal accounts because I am feeling better. I won't say that it's a cure and I won't say definitively that you should go out and use it. But what I will say is that I believe it was crucial to my recovery. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying that. And first of all, there's a lot in the media as much as they they're, they're as guilty of this insanity as a lot of other people. But there's a lot in the media that would hate the fact that Trump would have gotten this right. People say, well, there's no antidote, you know, a a anecdotal evidence. Well, there's not because we didn't know about this thing until, you know, late December. So how can we have anecdotal dev uh, evidence for years that, that we didn't know about something? Right. There's no, there is no history. We can only try to do what's right. Now is the time to see if this thing is that. You throw stuff out there. It's just not this. They're looking at, what, 60-some-odd drugs that they're trying to put certain cocktails and see what works and what doesn't work. And just remember that there is still a huge portion of people out there that will get this and will be asymptomatic with nothing more than what seems like a head cold or allergies and will feel nothing else. And that is the majority of people that will get this. It's not a, I've talked to so many people who are so ill-informed and so scared, like that couple. I didn't speak to them here in Phoenix, who, who one's in critical condition, the other one is, is, has passed away, who think that getting this thing is a death sentence, and it's not. For 99% of people, it's an annoyance. 
it's worse than the flu because of its spread rate. But I think when you, if we went out and did the numbers, what do they say the numbers are? Right? They talk about the numbers right now about being 1%, right? For a healthy person, 1%. Healthy person. And that is based on the kind of the numbers we have now, the data we have now, because we're only testing really sick people. If they say that the spread rate is about, you know, so what we're catching is one out of every 10 people that have it, that means right now we'd be sitting about 40, 450,000 based on our numbers if that was real. You even cut that in half. And... You're you're getting down to essentially about double the death rate of the flu if that if that was to be believed based on data. Think about that for a second. So instead of it being ninety nine point nine percent of people who get the flu survive, it would be ninety nine point eight percent of people who get this survive. That changes everything. But if it bleeds, it leads. And the media has an issue here that I think when the backlash comes on some of this stuff, and I do think we, we're we not out of the woods. I think we're going to have uh, uh, some peaks and some valleys. I think we're going to have some rough times. I think it's going to be some psychological issues as us as a mass as a whole when we get back out there. But I think people are going to look back and say, overreaction, maybe not so much the medical side of things, but when it comes to the media, there may be an overreaction of the media. And if it bleeds, it leads. And you never see anything else about this except for the world's coming to an end. And that's not happening. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Everybody's looking for ways to help in this time of crisis, right? Because some people are blessed. They're still working. Look, even at 30% unemployment, 70% of America is going to be working. And that 30% of unemployment is only going to be that way for a little while. But we're still going to have scars from this, and those scars are going to be for our first responders and their families. I work with Wounded Paw Project, who are an amazing organization. What they do is they rescue animals in shelters. So these are service dogs who are in shelters. They take them from the shelters, train, I mean, uh, service, you know, become service dogs from shelters. I was talking to Ernesto, who, who runs the company. He says, we take sometimes the worst dogs, dogs that were fighting dogs, dogs that were bait dogs. And we take them from shelter dogs to service dogs, and we get them to our veterans, first responders, and their family. Now in a time of need, more than ever, they need your help. Uh, you can donate. It's easy. Proceeds are used to protect, advocate, and transform shelter dogs into service dogs for veterans, first responders, and their families. And it's awesome. You can take action today and turn your extra car, truck, RV, even a boat into a vehicle for change. On top of that, they accept cash, and they're always looking to partner up with shelters across the nation. Why don't you call them? 844-678-4PAW. Find out how you can be a part of the helping to save a paw and save a life. 844-678-4729. Or you can visit them online at woundedpawproject.org. That is woundedpawproject.org. At Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. Hi, everybody. It's Danny DeVito. And I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart, stay home. I mean, everybody. I mean, we got this virus, this pandemic, and, you know, young people can get it. And they can transmit it to old people. The next thing you know, I'm out of there. Please do us a favor, all of us, and stay home, not spread this virus around. Thank you. Watch a little TV, why don't you? Yeah, why don't you? A lot of stars. He wasn't annoying. So many stars are (laughs) watching this. And some are funny. Case in point. Sports announcers like Joe Buck and many others who have nothing to announce on right now. So they're asking you, hey, send your videos of whatever you're doing in regular life so we can practice announcing what's going on in your life. Wyatt is crying. All hell is broken loose inside this house. Quarantine day seven. Oh, 
Oh, but they're hugging. Here they come. They've completed lap number five. You got Lexi in the lead. Louie tried to track her down. Here's Louie to the inside. He'll back away. Oh, Millie gets in the way. They make contact. Shell on the left is trying to prepare dinner. Wyatt on the right fighting back a yawn. Dressed like kind of a half-ass Fred Flintstone. Now it's all about the asparagus. Courtney's got the angle. She's got the pan. It's out of here. Asparagus and potatoes. Asparagus and potatoes. <laughs> Nothing going on. Got to practice to say I want to keep their their skills sharp. Keep those skills working. Send us your stuff. So Joe Buck and many others out there are just, they're bored too, like everybody else. They're looking for something. So if you want to, find them on the old Twitter. Send them some stuff. Maybe they'll be able to help you with that. Give you a little bit of oomph, right? 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. Again, as we all go through this, people are wondering, when can I get a test? It's going to be necessary. You see, we moved past the need for testing for individual health care purposes, but for the larger public health objective of reopening our economy, we're going to need tests at a capacity we haven't seen yet so that we can avoid this uninformed, premature reentry into society and the reinfection of our neighbors. Which is, that, that's the big thing. The reaffection rate, right? That's Tom Boser, he's former Homeland Security Advisor. And you've got to think about the reaffection rate. So what you're seeing, and by that, it's not even reaffection in the sense that somebody's had it gets it again, because they're showing that the data out there, it's you usually get it once and that's it. What they're talking about is that we'll, we'll see this plateau, and it's only because we've hit the pause button. It's still out there, and we start moving... And we start re-entering into society, and the next thing, you know, we look up, and we're like, oh, my God, here we go. And the next thing you know, what ends up happening? There's another spike. So we've got to be smart about this. Everybody shares his frustration and his hope, but what he needs to do is avoid second waves and reinfections. You know, at this stage, we've paid a very heavy cost in our economy and in our lives. To lose the benefit of it at this point by not sticking to our guns would be a really devastating decision. Yeah, former Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bosert right there. So we just got to be smart. And, And I do think, like Florida today is told, you're coming from New Jersey, Connecticut, New York, you have to quarantine yourself for 14 days. Regionally, I think this will be devastating in some areas. But the areas where it's devastating, if you're looking economically, right, which is horrible because we don't, never want to put lives above money. But if you're looking economically, New York and San Francisco will bounce back much quicker than some other places that are going to be affected as well. In some states, I think, will just not be affected as much as others. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter for me to tweet at me, you can text the program as well. Happy Tuesday. Oh, it's a good day, kids. Jeff Vincent Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. We also have a large team working on what the next steps will be once the medical community gives a region. Regionally large. Meaning the okay to get going, to get back. Let's go to work. Our country wasn't built to be shut down. This is not a country that was built for this. It was not built to be shut down. Here's something that's interesting. I want you guys to understand this. Right, like today, India's prime minister has told 1.3 billion people, you guys need to be locked down and stay in your house for 21 days. Good luck with that. We'll see how that goes. A spread in India would be wow. Right? A spread in India would be like, oh, my God. But the West, in particular places like Britain and, and America, we kind of come at this with this kind of like, are you sure? Like, I hear it's like the flu. Well, people are in Italy are dying. Well, they all smoked and they're 105. <laughs> right? But like, 
You know, I mean, are you guys sure? Like, we have this skeptical nature. Like, I don't know. Maybe. Like, kinda, I don't. I feel okay. I talked to a guy yesterday, a kid. He's got it. I talked to him on the phone. We did an interview with him. I said, are you sick? He says, yeah. I said, are you worried? He goes, nah. I go, what about your roommates? He goes, nah. He goes, all my friends, that were, we went on a trip, and all my friends who tested, they all came back negative. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm just going crazy. I said, one day I feel like I have a cold. Next day I felt then I had a fever, but now it's kind of all gone. I'm sitting around. We do have a skeptical nature, right? And I think that's a good thing. And I also think we have a nature of, you know, when I talk to people, they're all like, I just want to get to work. I just want to get to work. I just want to get back to my life. I just want to get to work. There's going to be a psychological thing on the other end of this for people who are going to be shell-shocked in the economy. But a lot of people I talk to are just like, I just want to go to work. I just want to work. I just want to work. I want to get out of here. I want to go to work. I want to go to work, 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 work. What happens? That's a big question. What happens in this day and age? There is an issue here that needs to be dealt with in the second wave of us getting back out there and getting back to work. And one of the things I was talking about here is something we've tossed around and and talked about on the show, which is uh, we know that it really affects the elderly and people with underlying conditions. Should we be looking at them rather than everybody? One option under consideration at the White House, people under 40 could go back to work on a still-to-be-determined date. Then it would be Americans ages 40 to 50. Sources tell ABC the restrictions for those 60-plus and with underlying conditions could be significantly longer. But public health officials say strict social distancing measures need to stay in place to contain the virus. ABC News contributor and former Trump Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert. As you know, at this stage, we've paid a very heavy cost in our economy and in our lives to lose the benefit of it at this point by not sticking to our guns would be a really devastating decision. Yeah, it would be. But I think for a lot of people that I talk to, right, they're thinking to themselves, the the outcome on the other side may be worse than what all this is about, especially with something that we're unsure if it's going to be seasonal, right? Like That's one of the things, right? If we're so worried about this thing, and we should be, we need to find a vaccine, that's obvious. First and foremost, we find a treatment. But what about the seasonal side of things? What if this thing is seasonal? Are we going to stop down every nine months there's an outbreak? And just say, oh, the economy just has to go back in a shell? That you, you, you couldn't live your life that way. Right? There's also the other side of things that I've seen several other doctors talk about, which is at some point in time, everybody may get it, and that may be the best thing because... Then, and, and we're talking over periods of time and years, because eventually what ends up happening is you build up some sort of antibodies and immunities, but it has nowhere else to go. And it's not a shocker to the system. But Trump is itching to put the country back to work. And he's seeing what's happening. I think by May, we'll start to see that. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. I do believe by May we'll see some form of normalcy return. It's not going to be April. I think April in regions, especially if this thing stays in a regional scenario. you got you know Florida saying, all right, you're coming here. You're from Connecticut, from New York, New Jersey. You need to have 14 days of quarantine. So... Know that. That's what they're looking for. But, you know, India today, 1.3 billion people. Stay inside. Don't go anywhere. That's tough. That's tough. Who's going to hear that warning? Who's going to feed the people? It's, it's, it is, you know, it's a tough situation for people. So we'll see. But this country was built to work. And you're if you're the president... You're balancing, we need to put people back to work. We, we need to make sure that the, the, the economy and the engine of, and the lifeblood of this country is, is flowing and working. And at the same time, we have to weigh, you know, what is the possibility of this thing becoming, you know, 320 million people or 60 million people, God knows the census going on, that we have here, getting this. We're at 41,000 confirmed cases. At this moment in time. So people are going to start asking the questions. If this thing gets to 200,000 over the next month, month and a half, 
and it kind of languishes in and around there, I think people have real questions about was this an overreaction or wasn't it? I don't think it was. I think it was the right reaction under the circumstances. But do I think things could have been better? Yeah, and I think people look at that in the future and say, okay, we could have done this better. We should have done this better. We need to be more prepared. If we were more prepared, that's something else I was talking to a doctor yesterday. I said, if we were more prepared, would these actions not have been as what seemed to be very desperate and quick? Meaning if we had hospitals and we were set up for ventilators and we were set up for certain things and we had an understanding of this, would we be in a situation where we could have said, yeah, we're going to social distance, but we're not going to lock stuff down. People could still go to work. Would, would that have changed? And I think that was tr- that that might be true. And that's something we'll take on into the next pandemic that will come, which will come. Just when? 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. You can text the program as well. So with all that being said, we got no sports. we got nothing. The last holdout was the Olympics, and everything will just be pushed back a year that the games will take place at some point during the summer of 2021. Uh, you know, that means that, of course, individu- individual countries are going to have to reschedule uh, all of their qualifying processes. All of that stuff is just going to get pushed. Yeah, all of it. But Japan had no choice but to do this because you were losing... Let's be honest, you're losing Australia, Canada, America, the Western powerhouses who are going to bring with them not only their athletes, but billions and dollars of revenue for television rights and tourism who are like, we're not coming. You have no choice but to do this. And you didn't want to see another spread take place and be known as the coronavirus Olympics. This was inevitable. There was no way for these games to proceed. It was simply too dangerous, bringing not only thousands and thousands of athletes to Tokyo this summer when this global pandemic right now, four months earlier at this time, is still raging, but the kind of uh, resources it takes, the kind of manpower it takes to get the games up and running. There was simply too much um, too much danger. It couldn't happen. Yes, yeah, Jeremy Schaaf. I love Jeremy Schaap. He's great. So we're moving on. It'll be fine, right? The European Soccer Championship celebrating. Uh, we're celebrating their, like, I think it was their uh, centennial or bicentennial uh, this year. And that's like the World Cup for Europe. Same thing with Copa America for South America. They're pushing out a year, right? The big question for, for us is in the entertainment sports world is, is there going to be games anytime soon? You know, a lot of people go, what about the NFL? The NFL seems to be on track. They're doing their thing. Uh, But we won't know for a while. And, you know, what happens if, let's just say, let's just throw it out there. Let's say six weeks from now, we're coming out of this, but there's still issues. New York City, Seattle, Washington State, California, but a lot of the other country is it it's it's had its peak and it's kind of dissipated. Maybe it didn't get so uh, so bad in certain areas, and we've just you know we're getting back to life as normal. Some of those other places are still struggling. Is there a point where we say, all right, well, baseball season's going to start, and because of that, we're going to be in a situation where we've just decided that those teams whose homes are affected still by this because there's still an outbreak or they're still worried about it. They're either going to play and have no games or they're going to have to play elsewhere. That's a possibility. And what about the length of a season? In 1995, they played 144 games. In 1981, because of a strike, they played 106 to 110 games. They shortened the season by a week in 1972. Uh, I think baseball is going to be flexible in how it deals with this. Yeah, absolutely. Buster Olney right there. Mark uh, Teixeira, former major leaguer, talks about, you know, how long could the season go? I think you start getting in a lot of trouble when you start talking about playing games in November and December. The weather just won't allow that in Major League Baseball. Yeah, so that's true, too. I mean, imagine this. Like, let's say the Yankees uh, or Boston is in the World Series, and it's snowing. It's like, you can't have it. Chicago. Right? That's just, that can't happen. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. And we missed those. Isn't it crazy how we 
you know, it's like, oh, it's a sport. It's this, that, and the other. Why do people get so crazy? When you don't have it, you realize how important it was in just us as a nation and why sport and entertainment and stuff like that is so important because it does bring us together and it does a lot for our psyche. 323-538-2423 is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Car Shield looking to save some money. Yes, everybody is in this day and age. That's where Car Shield comes in. Saves you money. How you say? Well, first of all, their plans start as low as $99 a month. What does that mean? Call them up. 800 car, 6,000. Mention code Benson saves you 10%. You say, I've got a car. Maybe your car's 10 years old. You like your car, but you don't have a warranty. Say, I don't need any, I don't have any electronics, GPS, any of that stuff, but I would like to have my car covered just in case my transmission or engine go out. They'll give you, hey, this is what you need. You don't need all this other stuff. You only need this. Maybe you call 800 car, 6,000, use code Benson to save 10%, and you say, hey, my car's a little newer, bought it for cash. I don't have a warranty. What can you do for me? And I do have all the electronics. They've got a plan for that. It's affordable. Again, starting at $99 a month. You call them up. You tell them what you're looking for. 24-7 roadside assistance. A rental car for free. Well, your car's in the shop. Shop's the shop that you choose, not them. They get whoever it is, even the dealership you want to take it to, pay directly. You pay a small deductible. It is simple. Find out all the things you can do and to protect yourself in the case of what if with CarShield. Plans start as low as $99 a month. 800 car 6000 code Benson saves you 10% or go to carshield.com, carshield.com. Use that code Benson to save 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Don't let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. Public health includes economic health. That's the key point. And it's not either or. It's not either or. And that's why we're taking a fresh uh, look at it. Yeah, that's Larry Kudlow there. And that's a real thing, right? I mean, that, that, that we, do, we don't want to say that because we feel awful that we even talk about something like this, you know, Cuomo earlier today saying, you know, if it comes to the health of the people over the economy, obviously the people, of course, it's easy to say that when you've got a net worth, working people, small business and poor people don't have a net worth. Right. And they're struggling day to day. That's why they, you know, our politicians need to get off their ass and stop trying to shape visions, stop trying to, you know, throw things into these bills that don't need to be there because you think this is a great time to add some pork and or to get your vision across. Enough is enough. It is true. We have it's a great saying that we used to say in England. When I was over there, that the British used to say, and I just thought it was awesome. I, I did. They said, man, we fight like lions. Unfortunately, we're led by donkeys. And I think that more and more every day. That Americans do fight like lions. And the more and more I look up, I realize that we are led more and more by jackasses than we are people that care. They're still living in the world of red and blue, Republican and Democrat. Stop it. Live in the world of Americans. You have your life, a net worth that you have gotten, right? Because you've built fiefdoms and power inside of a structure politically that you should never have gotten to. And the American people have been taken advantage of. And it's now time for us to hold these people accountable on both sides of the aisle. It's that simple. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Love hearing from every single one of you. This, kids, this may be true. The world is coming to an end and there's a reason for it. It's one of the upsides of this whole drama 
our world has been taking a kick in. We've damaged our world. And it's no surprise that our world is reacting to the human race. There's no surprise that a virus has been created that is going to slow us down and ultimately make us think differently about our world and ourselves. That's like a real, for me, that's a standout thing that's very obvious. That's Idris Elba talking about the world, basically, being a living, being conscious understanding. I've said for years, eventually, the world's going to get sick and tired of us and, uh, and we'll all just disappear. Is that now? No. This is almost like the world's cry out to like, hey, 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 you're kicking me. You know, and what you're doing is not good. So I'll get rid of you as any organism would do is try and get rid of an infection. And maybe this is it for the world. So maybe that's it. Have you seen, though? Like, there's some good things out of this. First of all, traffic is nil in certain places. And I'm loving that. Secondly, go look at places like Venice. Look how the wildlife's coming back. Look at the waters and the canals. Look at the lack of 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 smog and and stuff in some of these cities where normally it's nothing but a giant car apocalypse on a daily basis. That's awesome. Shows how fast the world can change. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. At Chad Menson shows your Twitter. I'm just telling you guys, there's going to be some stuff that comes out of it. And if you're able to maneuver through this thing as a business and reinvent yourself, I think on the other side, tenfold for you. Chad Benson Show. thoughts independent life this is chad benson i think that they think that they have the republicans over a barrel reality calls and congress is hanging up more charitable americans are thinking to themselves well there's some good members of congress but we can't figure out what they're good for less charitable americans are saying you know how did these morons make it through the birth canal I love John Kennedy. I can listen to him all day. Talking about the stimulus bill. So you got the House package. You got the Senate trying to get their stuff through. This is the way this thing goes. It's going to battle back and forth. People are looking for checks. Somebody just says, Chad, you don't need a check. You're still working. I never said I needed a check. The American people need a check. I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. I have a small business as well, and we're doing everything we can. Uh, my uncle and I have a company and keeping you know our people going best we possibly can, but at this point in time, it is what it is. We're doing the best we possibly can. It's everybody, right? But we don't need people to throw in things, both sides, into this bill, right? They call it a slush fund for corporations. I look at it and I said, you know, maybe some of that is slush. Let's take some of that stuff out. Let's do its own separate bill. Uh, but at the same time, you can't be putting restrictions on some of these corporations that you're telling, hey, we're going to bail you out, even though we've told you you can't operate. So because we've told you you can't operate and that you need to shut down, yeah, you, you need to do that. You need to help some people out. But we can deal with them in a little bit. Let's first and foremost deal with who? The American people. Small businesses, 500 and under. The mom and pop shop. The lady and, and guy who, who, who've who got a small business, a, a plumbing company that they've had to lay some people off. They can't advertise anymore, right? Even though it's a necessity, right? But people are putting certain things off. The hairstylist and the people who own salons, people like that, they need help today. Let's deal with them today. And then tomorrow, once we get a clean bill through, a clean bill shouldn't be 1,400 pages packed with all kinds of restrictions and crap. That's the reality of it. 
People are losing their jobs, they're losing their savings, they're losing the 401k. We think we know how to get the economy back on its feet over the next 60 to 90 days until we can get control of the virus. Some of my colleagues, they're acting like a-holes. I'm sorry, I'm not saying they mean to, but nonetheless, they're killing it. Yeah, they are. And I think we need to look at this and say, all right, what do we do? How do we get this going? Right? Well, we want a slush fund. It's not a slush fund. Again, I don't care what you get. Do corporations separate. First and foremost, it's simple. A clean bill. We're going to do this for the American people. If, you know, uh, every man and woman over the age of 18 gets X amount of dollars. Right? And now think about this, too. And as I was trying to explain to people, they're like, well, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to get unemployment as well. So if you're getting unemployment... And you're getting this. This is to help tide you over till we get back. And getting back is going to take a while. And I'll tell you why. Because of the psychological aspect of this. And I would like to hear from you guys out there. You can text the program, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. How many of you freaked out about this? And I'm not just talking about from the financial sad point or the standpoint of the germs and and the virus and what may or may not be. My other show that I do uh, with my 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 cohort, uh, who's just, he's a great guy, great radio guy, and he, he and I have been friends for a while, and we were talking about this yesterday. He says, how do you deal with it? And I said, well, I just deal with it, man. I said, I go out and I live my life. I, I mean, my life, by the way, hasn't changed all that much, right? I, I'm kind of a do my own thing. And because I work so much and time for my family and my lizards and whatnot, and and, and not a lot has, has really changed that much, minus the fact that I'm not playing, you know, in, in my soccer league outside of that, you know, and I would normally go to at least a movie every other week. And I'm not doing that. But it hadn't changed that much. But he's like, everywhere I look, it's poison. Because he's already a bit of a germaphobe. And he says that everywhere I look, it's poison. I look over here, it's poison. If I go to use a handle, it's poison. Everything is poison. And that's a tough thing. We're not taking into account the psychological aspect. So even if tomorrow we get a handle on this thing in a way that we didn't think we we're going to handle on and we push forward and we start to emerge from this thing in two weeks or a month and you see the market start to take off again, businesses start to open and reload again, there is a psychological aspect of this. And the first one is what we're going through is kind of in a place that we've never been before at this moment in time. We are all in a completely unprecedented territory where our normal reaction to a crisis like this, which is to get together with friends, which is to meet up with the people we care about, we can't use that strategy in this crisis. It's just really problematic for the virus. So I think we're in in a particularly challenging time, not just in terms of this health crisis, this physical health crisis, but also a potential mental health crisis as well. Yeah. And I explained to people that's that's a big thing. Because while people, we, we, we've never been more connected yet further apart because we're always busy, right? So we're always doing something. Now, in a time of need, when we have slowed down and we're watching this thing unfold, we do need human contact in a way that we've, we haven't needed it in, the ye- in years because we've had some human contact. We kind of take it for granted, but we, we've been living very busy lives in a very much a digital world. And now we're looking around saying, well, we need certain things because human beings, we're pack animals, right? We're not supposed to be alone. And it's it's a very interesting thing because things that, that you know, like I read an article the other day, the phone calls back in, right? The phone call is back in. Texting is way more popular when you're busy. But when you're sitting around and you're kind of lonely because when you're busy, you're doing other things. And that includes talking with other people. But the phone call now is in in a way that it hasn't been for a long time. Plus. Yeah, I think what we need to do is we need to harness those instincts that we have to be compassionate, to help others. But we need to do it in a slightly different way. And and it's it's a challenge, right? This takes work. I remember when some of my students were leaving campus, you know, they all wanted to run up and and get a hug. They're scared. And it was like, can't do that. You know, social distancing. But the good news is that we have these other technologies that allow us to do that. Um, One of the ways we can harness those technologies is really to reach out more than we would. Yeah. And that right there is Lori Santos. She's a psych professor at Yale. And she's right. We've got to use these things in ways we've never done it. 
And that includes, you know, helping with an older generation that maybe isn't great with technology, setting things up, making sure they get it, because they're into a physical contact, face-to-face thing. And at this point in time, that is not a good thing to do, especially for a lot of different things. Uh, First, obviously, they're sick, uh, and you don't want to get them sick. And secondly, it's not just even about them. It's about the people, especially people who are in nursing homes and stuff like that. It's about the entire collection of people inside of those areas. Just the act of doing what I'm doing now, you called it sheltering in place. I'm basically trying to socially distance and just not go out of my home unless I need to do so. That act in and of itself is a way to help people. But I'm helping my elderly mother who has COPD and is really um, like particularly vulnerable to this bias. By me not going out, I can take action to flatten the curve. Which is what we need to be doing. Again, Lori Santos, Yale psych professor. And these are just little things. But we got to remember, we're kind of here's the one thing that's other. It, we're, we're in this together. And that's something we all need to realize. We're in this together and that our freedoms come with responsibilities. And those responsibilities aren't just to our families, but to our neighbors, to 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 coworkers and things of that nature that we need to to remember that, hey, you know what? Me not going here may not just benefit me and my family. It may benefit my coworkers and other people I may come in contact with. But all of that being said, there is a psychological thing that we are going to go through as we exit this thing, which we will, that is going to look much different. Because people are going to be going out into the world in a way where they're a little shell-shocked, they're a little gun-shy. Do I spend money? Don't I spend money? Is it or is it going to come back? What could or could not happen? What should I do? What shouldn't I do? These are things that are going to take place in the coming weeks and months that people are going to have to deal with. Can I spend money again? Can I not spend money again? Can I go to certain places? Can I not go to certain places? Should I go to the movie anymore? Should I not go to the movie? It isn't until we've, A, seen a breakthrough in treatment, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, and then eventually have, I think, a a point where we see some sort of vaccine come in that people are going to get back to their normal behavior pre this. So post this, it's going to take a while to get back to that. And I think that is something the economy is, is going to struggle with too. We could say tomorrow, we're getting back to normal. Everything's fine. Great. We figured it out. It's this and we move. There are still going to be people that are shell shocked and not spend money. So while the foundation of the economy may you know, while it's 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 not crumbling, but it's definitely not on the, the the footing it once was. There's still the psychological aspect, and I don't think people quite get that. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program. You know, it's interesting. Here's somebody. I, I well, you, does anybody know who this guy is? Well, we've stood as one. This nation has never ever been defeated. We've been together, and we're not going to be defeated now. The pandemic of 1918, the Great Depression, two world wars, we overcame them all. And out of each crisis, we emerged stronger. And we will again. That right there is Joe Biden. You forget, we're still in the middle of primaries. Nobody's grabbed the full force of their primary and the Democratic side. Bernie, we know, isn't going to win. Joe will. But what does that even look like in the coming weeks and months, especially with so many primaries being postponed? And how do we vote in November? What does that look like if we're still in the midst of all this, which we won't be? But still, there is politics still going on. And it's hard to raise money. It's hard to do any of these things when, you know, he's hunkered down. They're not holding rallies anymore. Trump's not holding rallies anymore. It's virus 24-7, 365 at this point in time. So, yeah, but he's still there. Still there waiting for something. And I don't even know what that looks like come, you know. I mean, they've got theirs in July. The Republicans have theirs in August. Are they going to hold theirs in July? Are they going to have a very subdued one where they only invite X amount of people? Uh, are they going to move it from a place, you know, that because let's just say here's something else. What if I'm out here in Phoenix? They're going to hold it back east where in, uh, uh, in, in Milwaukee. 
what if Wisconsin's struggling with this, but Phoenix is relatively unscathed? Are they going to come here? Move it all around? Cancel it all together? It's going to be very interesting to see where the politics of this plays itself out because we will be voting in November. That will happen. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. I'm working with a great organization that is, at this point in time, let me tell you something. You know, I work with Wounded Paul. People always ask me, so they help out veterans. This is not just veterans. I said they help out our first responders, too. And our first responders, if you've seen them around the country, especially in certain areas where the, this crunch of the virus is hitting, you see how hard they're getting crushed you realize that this is why Wounded Paul was created. Yes, our veterans are struggling, struggling with PTSD, struggling with physical injuries that they will never recover from. But our first responders are struggling as well. And that's why Wounded Paul is there. They've combined their love of dogs, their dedication to finding a way to help their veterans, first responders, and their family. And they created Wounded Paul. And it is an incredible thing. Their motto is to save a Paul is to save a life. And it is so true. So they take and transform these shelter dogs to service dogs, and they get them to our first responders and their families to help them through times like this. They're going through things, and it's just amazing to watch the work that they do. Donating is easy, and they need your help. Proceeds are used to protect, advocate, transform shelter dogs and service dogs for veterans, first responders, and their family. You can donate a extra car, truck, RV, even a boat. It is truly a vehicle for change. You get a great tax deductible gift. They also take cash as well. Find out how you can help, and they're always looking for organizations and and animal shelters across the country to to partner with. Go to woundedpawproject.org, woundedpawproject.org, or call eight four four six seven eight four paw. 844-678-4729 or woundedpawproject.org. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. The rate of infection is going up. It is spiking. The apex is higher than we thought and the apex is sooner than we thought. That is a bad combination of facts. Governor Cuomo there wants the government to step in and give him more ventilators. Uh, earlier, I was watching Dr. Drew, and I've been doing a lot of studying. Uh, you know, this the, the hydrochloroquine and the, the planaquinil uh, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, pla- plaquinil. These, these are showing real signs. It's, it's time that we, we try everything, and I know they're rolling stuff out, but one of the things they talked about, if we have a treatment, what that will do is it will reduce hospital stays, or it will reduce the number of people that need to go to the hospital. So desperate times call for desperate measures. We've got opportunities here, and we don't have time to plan it out over months and months and years. This is what it is, so let's see what it's doing. France is already moving full steam ahead. They said to not give this out, this treatment, and to try it in mass would be essentially morally wrong and criminal. So they're trying it. We need to start looking at ways that we can step forward and do this, right? And I do believe that we, in some parts of the country, may turn a curve. This week's going to be very quiet. You'll see the numbers rise. But we've already made all the big decisions for most of the country. That decision has been made. So anything new. India today said, nope. $1.3 billion, you're staying in. I don't know how that works. For 21 days, too. By the way, not 14 or 15, for 21 days. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. There's good news. I think certain businesses are going to revamp. I think the way that business is going to be done in the future is much different. Talk to several business owners here who have pretty big businesses say they're looking at a three and two scenario in the future where people have an opportunity to work either three days in office, two days at home, or vice versa. Because it is working well. They're not seeing anything go down. Tonight's the Great American Takeout. So if you have a chance, support your local business. Get out there and do that. We all need to pitch in at this moment in time. And some people are frustrated with the way that Congress is acting. I have news from you. They'll figure something out. They'll pat each other on the back. Uh, but at the end of the day, they are who they are. And let's remember that. We are America, not them. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Lightstream can help you. They are 
an amazing, amazing company. Right now, you're paying way too much on your credit cards. Get away from that. It's easy to lower your rate and save with Lightstream Credit Card Consolidation Loan. You can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay, $5,000 to $100,000 loans. In many cases, you can get it as early as the same day, and there's absolutely no fees. And just for being my listener right now, special interest rate discount. Go to lightstream.com slash Benson, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-M dot com slash Benson. They'll take care of you. Every penny helps. Stop paying 20% when you can get rates as low as 5.95% with a discount for being my listener. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offer subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash Benson for more information. Have a good rest of your day. Go get some takeout. We'll do it again tomorrow. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.